first I would love to get started with the food industry, where the latest is about uh, the new food labeling requirement with regards to allergen, especially on sesame. Uh, now, sesame has been declared as a major allergen, and as such, it has to be part of the new labeling component, and it's going to trigger a lot of outward changes. This is coming really together in the context of a very strong number of recall in North America with regards to missing product allergens, so it's really here to secure the safety of the consumers. Uh, the second one I would like to talk about, it is not or not yet um, an FDA uh, regulatory change. Uh, however, it is the um, state level food additive bans. It's already enforced in uh, two states in the United States. The reason why I wanted to talk about it is really because of the magnitude of the change of, uh, of this new regulatory uh, ban. Um, it's uh, a lot of food additives that are going to be banned and it's going to impact 38,000 product formulas. And you can imagine that the number of outward changes will be exponential. The last regulation uh, update I wanted to talk to you about has been a massive one for the cosmetic industry. It's, it's called the MOCRA. Uh, and this has uh, been uh, encompassing quite a lot of uh, labeling changes. The most significant ones are including allergens up to a certain thresh threshold, um, talking about which products are for professional use or not, including absolutely in a mandatory way uh, the addresses of the producer. And finally, ingredients have to be uh, labeled in the, according to international standards. So it's a good question because uh, depending on what type of regulatory changes we're talking about, there can be different scenarios. Scenario number one is when, for example, there will be an ingredient ban. In this case, R&D product will have to work first and foremost on product reformulation. Then only the regulatory team will be able to create the new labeling, labeling sheet, and then only the artwork changes will need to happen. It makes very often the, the ability to have compliant packs on time way longer. And, uh, and even more lengthy. The second scenario that we have is when it's only a labeling change. And I'm just saying only within brackets, really, because the impact on the workload can still be very significant. In this case, obviously, there is no product reformulation. However, the regulatory team has to come up with new labeling sheets, and these changes have to be put onto the artwork. It can still remain a very substantial workload because sometimes, depending on the regulation, it can be the entire your entire portfolio that is going to be impacted. So if it's okay for you, I would love to share with you some best practices overall and then some very specific project-related best practices. Overall, all the time, and that's a, a major difficulty for CBG companies, you have to know your product portfolio inside out. You have to know which components are on your pack all the time. Second best practice um, is about having your process always well-defined and have your tech sorted. I'm sure my colleague from the product team will, will be telling you um, how, uh, how to best achieve that. From my point of view, it is really worth investing in technology that is going to uh, allow you for collaboration on a single platform and especially on automation. This is how you will be able to alleviate the pressure and reduce a little bit the uh, operational burden on your team when having to do a uh, such labeling changes. And now if we think of a specific project, for example, there are really some best practices. The first best practice that I would love to share is you have to define your project scope. It's not because it is just a labeling change that you cannot be expanding the, the entire scope. Do you want actually to merge this labeling change together with a redesign? Do you want to change your romance copy? Do you want to correct any typos that you could be having on the back? It's very critical to align on the total scope of your project. Second is you will need, of course, very robust project management. That's very clear. Also together with very robust communication channel within your cross-functional team. We know that any artwork project is going to require the involvement from many functions. It is critical to be sure that every single function knows where the, pro the project stands and whether we keep track or not, especially with regards to labeling changes where we are going to have a hard deadline. The third best practice that I want to share with you is train, train, train. 
any labeling change project is an amazing opportunity to train again your people internally on your processes, on your tools, but also to train your vendor and especially train your vendor on the regulatory change itself. And finally, I'm a very big uh, fan of continuous improvement. So once you have finalized your project, please learn from what went well and what didn't go well. This is really going to fuel continuous improvement.